Hello everybody and welcome back to my knitting podcast, Unwind and Knit With Me. Hello to all my existing viewers and thank you for returning and to any new viewers, welcome and I hope you enjoy it. Unwind and Knit With Me is my little part of the world where I talk about all my knitting, um, my works in progress, yarn, patterns, what I'd like to knit, that list is continually gets longer and longer because <laughs> there's just not enough knitting hours in the day. Um, but yeah, I talk about all things knitting. So welcome, sit back and I hope you enjoy it. You can um, follow me on Instagram and Facebook as I'm wanting to knit with me. And I also have a Facebook community group um, which is just lovely. Um, so feel free to join that community group. You will be asked to answer three questions and then you get accepted by one of the moderators. Uh, and that's a really nice little space where you can post things that you're doing, um, share ideas, but also ask questions. And there may be someone in the group, if not myself, there may be someone else in the group that can help you out. So yeah, unwind to knit with me and thank you. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and press the like button and that helps me with um, my po podcasting moving forward. Um, but yeah, so you'll also notice today um, the backgrounds change. So I thought I'd change things around a bit, uh, mainly for some natural light that comes in from at the side here I have um, opening doors, window doors, and at the back. So I just thought the lighting is a bit different and it's just nice to change up the scenery a little bit. So yeah, I thought I'd reposition myself. Um, it's I, I haven't already said it, I'm in Christchurch. So my name's Lisa, I'm from Christchurch, which is the South Island of New Zealand. And we are in spring and last time I podcast, the weather was really unsettled and we had snow, uh, but we have beautiful spring days here the last few days. And I did manage to take a little bit of footage of some of the tulips in town. So I will insert some photos um, probably at the end of uh, the tulips in Christchurch in the, in the main city area, they were just outstanding. Uh, also, I have been away for five days, so my husband and I went to Topor to visit family. Uh, my husband also did a ultra marathon run with his brother, which was really special. It's been in the making for two years because of COVID, this event kept getting cancelled. So it was really nice to go to um, Topor. Um, and I will say, I've always pronounced it as Talpo, Lake Talpo. But I did ask um, our, um, my brother-in-law, they have some teenage kids. And we're, all, we're trying to pronounce things correctly in, um, in the Maori language. Uh, so, yeah, so I've always called it. Talpo, but it's actually the correct pronunciation is Topo. So I am really trying, I'm really bad with languages and um, translations. It's it's not one of my fortes. I, I just don't grasp language very well, but I am making an effort um, here in New Zealand, um, Aotearoa, to start pronouncing things correctly. So we had a lovely time. Uh, I didn't get a lot of knitting done. It's just, you know, sometimes it, it's just too hard to knit um, when you're socialising. <laughs> so, but I, st I still managed to um, have quite a bit here to talk about. So um, I'm already four and a half minutes in. So uh, first off, what I'm wearing, we'll talk about what I'm wearing. I knitted this last year. And I know it's last year because it's in my old, um, I keep a knitting journal and I start a new one every year and it's filed away. So I haven't got it with me um, for any of the details, but it's Sunday Crew by Kate Oates. So there's the pattern there, Sunday Crew. 
and it's Kate Oates. And this is knitted in a, it was a three ply held together with mohair, uh, which I really enjoy. I've knitted quite a few um, just recently. If you've watched my last couple of podcasts, I have knitted quite a bit uh, double stranded mohair. I just love the softness and the airiness of it. And but I have knitted quite a bit with Possum Blend and it's not one of my favourites. I tend to lean, if I want something fluffy, I lean towards the mohair. So I really enjoy this. It's like a wee little sweatshirt. It has got a little cross detail here. I love the wide neck um, suits me because I don't like things close to my neck. I did the three quarter sleeve, like the bracelet bracelet length sleeve. Um, and it's got, I'll stand up and show you. It does have a nice, um, nice big rib there. I want to see my tummy. It does have a nice rib. Uh, I did, I think I did the rib a bit longer than what the pattern called for and the same in the sleeve. But I do really enjoy wearing this. I do wear it quite a bit. But, so that's the Sunday Crew by Kate Oates. So it's the first thing on my list. And I thought I would um, every now and then just show some of my older knits. So what I've got hanging behind me is the Jupiter Crop by Caitlin Hunter. And I'm a big fan of Caitlin Hunter. Um, I love her colour work. I love a lot of what she does. But that's the pattern there, Jupiter Crop. And that's the jersey hanging behind me. I don't wear it a lot. It's one of those tops that I actually got the gauge wrong. And I will talk a little bit about gauge in this episode. I didn't swatch, so it's my own fault. It knitted up beautifully and it does fit, but it's a tighter gauge than I would have preferred. I would have preferred it to be a little bit airier and drapier. Um, but in saying that, it, it is still a beautiful top. I knitted that in Outlaw Yarn. I think it's called their Rebel Light. Um, but yeah, so that's what I thought I'd do is every now and then just show you some of my older knits. There's, there's actually quite a few that I've given away, so I can't show you all of them. Um, I do tend to knit quite a bit and then gift it. Um, I, I keep most things, but I do gift quite a bit. So there are some things that I can show you the pattern of things I've knitted, but I can't actually show you the garment. Uh, one uh, classic example of that is earlier this year, I knitted the Ember sweater, which was quite a big project with a lot of colour work. And my, once again, the gauge was wrong. Um, after I washed and blocked it, it grew a real lot. Um, and it ended up probably being two or three sizes too big for me. I, could, I, I don't felt like I could get away with it. It just looked too big. So I gifted it and I feel really good about that because I gifted it to a dear friend who wears it quite a bit. So I do actually see it um, being worn. So that's really rewarding when you manage to gift something and see it worn. Have a wee copy. This is my mug I've shown you before and it's become one of my favourites. I bought it from Trade Aid and it's been made in Nepal and the proceeds go back to supporting that Nepani. Nepalese people that actually do this pottery um, so yeah, it's lovely lovely wee mug um, I'm just referring to my list in my last episode I'm pretty sure I showed you this so I was knitted I've been knitting dotted rays by Stephen West I think I had finished it, but hadn't quite, I hadn't finished it. I hadn't quite finished the I called bind off and I haven't, hadn't blocked it, but it's finished. So I will insert some photos at the end. It's quite, quite a big, decent size shawl. And uh, yeah, there's, you're not going to probably see it because it's in black, but there is an I-cord edge there, cast, it, cast off in I-cord. This is yarn that I bought from a wool festival 
and I bought two skeins and so it's been really nice to use it because it's been sitting in my stash for a couple of years. Once again, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it <laughs> or whether I'm going to gift it. But yeah, it's lovely. And and what I'd say about this shawl, if you have not yet um, taken the plunge into doing any of, any of Stephen West projects, this is a really nice Stephen West project. Um, it's TV knitting. It's really quite simple. Um, you're just doing those eyelets, eyelets. Um, I don't know. It changes as the wedges get bigger. The eyelets become less but yeah so that's Stephen West dotted rays and into... sorry I wanted to show you the pattern it is a paid for pattern it is on Ravelry and it is a pattern that you can do, um, I'll show you that there. That's one done all in one colour. So you don't have to do the stripes, but you can also do it in lots of multicolours. And if you've got lots of leftovers, you can do some stash busting and actually do a different colour for each wedge. And I have seen that on the projects uh, page. Actually, there might be a picture of it here. Pretty sure there is. There it is. So there's a picture of it. There's a picture of it done in multicolours. So it's all finished or blocked or completed, photographed, and um, I'm really happy with it. it. It was an easy pattern. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you're wanting to do a nice big shawl, I have got another one that I'd recommend too, but that is definitely one that I would recommend, is the dotted rays. Um, I should stay on track here and go through my list. <laughs> I will talk about the other shawl, and the reason I've got both the dotted rays and Pure Joy, is the other one, by Hohi Locatelli, and I have knitted this shawl and I've talked about it before, it's, this is it here completed. So it's a lovely one. And the reason I've got these two patterns out is because I am going to take one of them away with me on... I go to Europe um, in about three and a half weeks. And so I'm already in the process of planning what I'm going to take for my travel knitting, airports, sitting on planes, trains... I don't think we're doing buses. Um, so they're the two, Dotted Rays and Pure Joy. And the yarn that I have got put aside for it, I've already wound it. Are these two beautiful cakes? And this is a four ply. So, you see that there? So this is Devonia, it's four ply, it's um, a British yarn, it's 50% Exmoor Blueface, 30% Blueface Leicester and 20% Wensydale. 100% Devon wool made in the UK. So that's it there, it's Devonia. And in my shop I have the three colours that were the limited edition and that's two of them. So I'm going to take this away with me. And I'm going to do either Pure Joy or another Dotted Rays. And I'm actually leaning towards another Dotted Rays. Um, I don't know, maybe a Pure Joy. <laughs> they're both very similar in the fact that it's they're just eyelets and, short, and a big series of short rows. I've enjoyed knitting both of them. I would recommend both of them. And it might be a matter of just tossing a coin to see which one I actually choose. So that's, yeah, it's my dotted rays. My dotted rays and my, what was it called? Pure Joy by Hohi Locatelli. So that's what I'm doing there. I haven't decided. 
I said in my last podcast, I actually stress and agonize more over what I'm going to pack in my knitting bag than what I'm going to pack in my suitcase. Um, and I'm sure most of you could, are probably the same. You can probably all appreciate that. The other project that I have been working on, because this is also something that may come away with me, is the half and half triangle wrap. I haven't got a picture of it. It's a free pattern by Pearl Soho. So you can jump onto their website and um, I think you can print. I've printed it out. So you can actually print the pattern out. It is quite a big project. I have wound the yarn for it. So they're my two colours. So it's a dark blue and I'd actually call that a taupe. I don't think it's, I wouldn't call it a grey. It's a taupey sort of colour. And I'm knitting that out of Ashford's four ply. Just that yarn there. So Ashford's um, are here in the South Island in Ashburton. They're probably about an hour, hour and a half's drive from me. I do go there whenever I can. It's where I bought my spinning wheel. Um, and I just love going to the shop. There's a lot of temptation when I go to the shop. But anyway, let's get back to this. I have cast it on. And what I have done is I actually did an eye cord cast on. So Stephen West tutorial. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's a, you see that there? It's a beautiful edge. Not really showing up very well. Yeah. I... I'm becoming a really fan, a really big fan of the I-cord edge and the I-cord cast off. So I have cast this on with an I-cord and at one end is all short rows, but at the other end, um, I am doing an I-cord edging as well. Is that showing up? Yeah, you can see that there. So I've done an I-cord cast on and an I-cord edge. Now, I was going to take this away with me as my holiday project. I mentioned it in my last podcast. And a few of you come back with comments saying it's big. Once you get into it, it's a really big project. So it may not come with me. I may just, um, I may just leave it at home. What I'm doing with this too, I should mention. So I knit English style. I'm a thrower, not a picker. Uh, it's how I was taught as a little girl. But when I watch people knitting continental style, I, I'm so envious that it's such a beautiful style um, to watch people knitting. And it, I think it's a lot faster. There's less movement of with the hands. So what I'm doing with this project is that I have made a promise to myself that I am only going to knit this continental style so every time I pick it up I do continental style and the reason for that I thought if I do a little bit every day it's going to get easier and easier and muscle memory you know you just work with it but also what I'm aware of is once I finish this then I'm going to have to do something that teaches me how to purl do the purl stitch in continental and yeah, so I know I do know a lot of people that have taught themselves and they're now 100% continental knitters. I I don't know. I want to be. I want to be a continental knitter. But I think it's going to take a lot of work um, for that transition. So let me know what you think. Have you... Is there anyone out there that's actually completely converted from English style to continental? Um, and how did you go about it? It's, um, like I said, I think it's just perseverance. It's just like learning to knit all over again. And in my mind, it, that's how it is that I just have to learn from scratch how to knit continental style. I need to learn how to knit pearl, you know, Anyway, I'd like to do it. I, yeah, I really enjoy watching people do it. Um, right, I'm going to talk about my whips. Oh, that was my first whip. <laughs> I am talking about my whips. It's 
to my half and half. Now, since I sent you last, I have um, got a new cast on. I don't even know if I mentioned it. So after my last podcast, I think it was a Saturday and I saw it somewhere and I thought, well, I want that in my wardrobe. I want it this spring. I want it now. And it's another petite knits pattern and it's called the Cumulus T. Um, and I, I just really like it. I think it's really set. The pattern's really basic. Um, there's no finishing when you've finished. So as you're doing the short rows um, to create the back and the V-neck, it roll. I'll show you, it rolls over as you go and that's actually the finished uh, neckline. So there's no going back and picking up stitches and doing a rib. Now I started this while I was away in Topor and when I got home, I'd done about that much. And when I got home, I'd made mistakes. I, I hadn't done my increases where I needed to, so I pulled it all out. And that's why I said before, it's really hard to knit when you're trying to socialise and be around people. You, you just can't concentrate on what you're doing. Anyway, so I got home and pulled it out and I've started it again. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about gauge. I'm not an expert and I still haven't got my head around it, but I'm trying really hard to understand a bit more about gauge. I've been very lucky um, to kind of just wing it. You know, if I think, oh, well, I haven't got enough stitches, it's a bit tight, then I just go up a size. But I know that's not going to always work. And the other part of me too says, well, Lisa, it's knitting. It's a craft. It's not a, a science. It's not It's not science. It's actually um, a craft. So, so I don't know. I know there's some real talented people out there and there's some experts that you can go to to really look, learn about gauge. But I'll talk about what I've learned. So there's my swatch. I did my swatch and I've got there one, two, three, three eyelets. So I, that's three US. And where are my notes? Bear with me, I'm just going to get my notes sorted and in order. Okay. So we'll talk about gauge, and this is what I've learned. And it may not be exact. Um, so I don't want anyone to come back and say, you led me wrong. I, I, this is just my, what I've interpreted from what I have read. Um, and, I th and, I'm, and I'm still a bit confused. So anyway, there's my swatch. The needle size that I used was a 3.25. And the needle size in the pattern was a 3 mil. So I've gone up to a 3.25. The yarn I'm using is um, a four ply sock yarn, X more sock. And there's my swatch. Now I have wet blocked this and let it dry and I'm really happy with the fabric. Um, it's light, it's airy, you can, um, I, I, I'm happy with it. So I worked out the gauge that I got and what I got was 22 stitches per four inches, 22 stitches. But the pattern actually says 28. So I'm six stitches out, which is quite a lot. Now, according to this formula that I've looked at is I take, so I divide that by four and I get how many stitches per inch. And I, sorry, I multiply what they say which is seven centimetres, sorry, seven stitches in four, in one inch. What I got was 5.5. So I multiplied that seven by 5.5 and I got 38.5 centimetres. So if I'm right, what I need to do is go with the size that says 38 centimetres, which is all good. That would put me at a size... 
uh, I can't remember. But I've actually decided to go up a size bigger because I just don't trust it. <laughs> So I, I have gone up a size bigger. So that's what I'm saying. It's not an exact science. I do my swatches and if I like the fabric that I've created, then I try to work out what size to knit according to the um, the swatch I've made. And that probably makes no sense to anyone. I'm still finding it quite confusing. But um, that is the formula. So stitches per inch multiply them with each other and that should give you how many many you need i'm wondering if i should just delete this whole section out of the podcast um one moment okay let's get back to my cumulus tea by petite knits so i pulled it out and i've cast it back on and there's not much to show you there you can see that where i'm increasing um, the raglan sleeve and at the same time, I'm increasing on the edge. So this is actually the back and, and I'm working down that way. Really happy with it. What I have done is I've done a little spreadsheet for myself. Um, so I have to do 20. There's a four stitch repeat and I have to do that 20 times. And what I'm doing is I'm increasing at the raglan, but I'm also increasing for the V-neck. So I have done myself a wee little spreadsheet, um, just so if I put it down and pick it up, I, I know where, I know where I'm at because I did make a mistake last time. So um, yeah, so I, I really want to get that finished for uh, this season, and and I think I will. I might actually do a wee push to get it done before I go away. Although it's not something I'm going to take with me because I'm going over to a European winter. Um, but I'll see how I go. But that's the Cumulus Tea by Petite Knits. I've dropped my ball of wool. So um, this is, I'm using the Exmoor Sock. And the colour I'm using is actually one of my most popular colours that I sell. It's called Waterberries, and it's just a really nice navy blue. It is 60% Exmoor Blueface, 20% Corridale, 10% Warbles, and 10% Nylon. So there is a wee bit of nylon in here because it is a sock yarn, but it's not super wash. I don't know if you can, I think you can see that. There's a wee little halo to it, a wee little fluff. Um, and it's, it's the same yarn that I knitted my Pure Joy shawl in. A friend of mine has used this yarn to do the Stripes jersey by Andrea Mowry. She used six colours. Um, so it is a beautiful yarn for knitting garments although it is a sock yarn. So that's what I'm using for my Cumulus Tea by Petite Knits. This tea. Now, let's talk about Stephen West's Knit Along. Yay! So I signed up this year, first year that I've signed up for a Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. In the last episode, I talked about whether I was happy with my colour choice and uh, when the first clue came out, I decided I was going to stick with it. What I what I decided was that my swatch, there's my swatch there. I, I kind of felt that it just wasn't right. But then when I thought about it, I thought this isn't a good representation because the shawl's called Twist and Turn. So there's going to be a lot of... Um, detail and and the colors going to pop in different ways so i decided to stick with my original choice and for clue one which i feel okay to talk about and show you because most people are working on clue two now but if you do don't want to see clue one um fast forward or leave the room for a couple of minutes because i'm going to show you what i have done in clue one i haven't finished clue one which I'm a little bit disappointed about. In my mind, I thought there's a clue comes out every week, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna complete clue one before clue clue two comes out, and that was just never gonna happen. I went away. Clue two came out while I was away, 
and I think it's bigger than I thought it was going to be, which doesn't bother me, but I am not going to get this done in four weeks, like clue one, clue two, clue three, clue four. So I'm still on clue one and I still have quite a bit to go. So I'm going to show you. I'm super happy with the colours. I was so excited to see his tutorials. He's such a good teacher. His tutorial for this was was just outstanding. He he literally held your hand through every step and then at the end he said now repeat those x amount of times. And it was just it was lovely. Anyway, so that's what it looks like. They're my contrast and main colour. And you can see these funny wee little worms. <laughs> I don't know what you call them. But what happens is you create this amazing um, plait with them. So he's taken this and turned it into this. It's just outstanding. I just can't believe it. He's so, so clever. Um, I've I've just done this to show you, but as I, as I still have quite a bit of knitting to go, I will unravel that plait, which is really easy. It's just um, pulling them back out because it's easier to knit um, while it's not plaited. But at the end of section one, that's what those wedges are going to look like. He's so clever. Like, how did he even think of that? I just can't believe it. I, I'm so impressed and I'm so excited um, to get this done. So clue two is out and I and I know that in clue two I add my third colour, which is this. It's like a brick terracotta colour. So yeah i'm really happy i stuck with my original colors a lot of my viewers left comments and said lisa stick with your original colors and i'm really glad i did because i don't think that swatch really represents what's going on here i can't wait to add that um that brick color into it super super excited so glad I did it. Um, what it means though is a lot of my other projects have um, gone into hibernation in the last two weeks. I really wanted to get clue one finished before I come to you today with this podcast but sometimes you just have to accept that you know life happens and you don't always get done what you plan on getting done but really happy with my Steve and West knit along. That's living in my large project bag. I showed you them last time and it's got this drawstring. I took this away with me on the plane. Um, perfect. That's the tan with a black handle and there's a black one with a tan handle. But that's a large project bag. And that's my progress on my Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. So I know that some of my viewers are doing it. Um, there's a lot of people that have been posting on Inst Instagram. It's really exciting. Really, really exciting. So let's put that away. So I've got a couple of whips that I thought I'd talk about before I get on to the bigger ones. Now, this is one that I started months and months ago. And I'm really naughty for not finishing it because there's no reason I shouldn't have finished it because it's not a big project. And I really want to get it done for this season. So like I said before, over here um, in the Southern Hemisphere, we're spring going into summer. But it's the Ripple Bralette by Jessie Maid. Sit there. And of course, I'm doing a long body. I'd, I'd never... My daughter would wear that, but I wouldn't wear that. <laughs> The yarn I'm using is this beautiful, it's purple sprouting and it is 50% um, merino, 50% silk. So I think for close to body, for a singlet or, or a bralette, this, this yarn is just beautiful. The colourway I'm using, what's the colour I'm using? It's called Glass House. So I have done quite a lot on the body. 
and I think I'm nearly ready to um, cast on for the top section which I really think I could do in a weekend so I don't know why I haven't finished it it feels absolutely beautiful um, the colors that the colors have knitted up beautifully and I, I really want this in my wardrobe. I, I actually have got the yarn, the same yarn, merino silk, to do three of them. So I've got the yarn in my stash, um, two more lots, because I, I, I want to wear it. And I really want these in my wardrobe. So I'm not quite sure why that went into hibernation. But I've pulled it out and I thought, oh, I'm going to try to finish that over the next couple of days. So that's the um, Ripple Bralette by Jessie Maid. I know when I started it, I talked about it, which was probably 10 episodes ago. And I think it's a great little pattern as a stash buster. So for that single skein that you've got and you don't know what to do with, um, it's a single skein project. So, yeah, just a, just a thought. You might like it. I might inspire somebody to do it, but I'm really going to try to finish it. And the other project I talked about that I couldn't remember in my last episode because I was having a brain fog, but um, I knitted the No Frills sweater by Petite Knits and I knitted it um, with these two yarns, which is um, this beautiful dusty pink, which um, I'll think of. It's merino and it's got a bit of linen in it. It's Prosper Yarns and I double held that with mohair. And I had enough left over to do... Here it is here. The Oslo Hat by Petite Knits. So when I finished my sweater, one of my viewers said to me, well, I, I can see a theme going on here. <laughs> Why don't you knit the Petite Knits Oslo hat? So I jumped onto Ravelry and had a look. And they do a mohair version. So that's it there. The Oslo hat by Petite Knits. And I started it. And I haven't got that far. So it's a really tight gauge. Um, I think I'm doing it... I can't remember. Are my notes there? I think I'm doing it on a 3.25, but I'm not exactly sure. But it's, I don't know if you can see it, the gauges, it feels really tight, which is okay because it's a beanie. And I did have quite a few of my viewers say that they've knitted it and it's ended up too big, um, too stretchy, too slouchy. So I was aware of that. So I have. I have knitted it at, tight, at quite a tight gauge. Um, and once again, it's a beanie, right? So I should be able to knock this out in a weekend. <laughs> so those two small projects, the Oslo Hats by Petite Knits and my Ripple Bralette by Jessie Made, they're both in one of my small bucket bags. That's the small version. And I've, and I've actually got a pair of socks in here as well. So they do fit quite a lot. But um, I've literally got three small projects in that one bag. That's great. I've got socks, my bralette, and my Oslo hat. Um, so they're two little whips that have been laying around. Well, definitely the bralette. That's been laying around for months and months. And I'm actually, I think I might do a push to get them done before I start the next project that I'm going to talk to you about. Um, so I've talked about, I'm just checking my list. I have talked about everything on my list. Now I've got to start the next page. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to talk to you about are things that I have swatched and want to cast on, but also some new patterns that I've found um, that may inspire you. I will quickly though, because I have a bit of a confession I have to confess and man up. At the beginning of the year, I set myself a challenge to do a Marie Wallen project. And as you can see, I've done quite a bit of it. So I've done the body um, to the point where I have to stop now and do the sleeves. I've got that on hold on my Stitch on Hold cables. 
there. This is, what, I haven't got my pattern. I'm going to have to check the name of it. I bought this as a kit from um, the Woolly Thistle. I I love the yarn. So this is British Breeds. This is Marie Wallen's own yarn. Some people wouldn't like it because it actually smells quite sheepy, but I like it. And I set a challenge to complete this jersey, to complete a Marie Wallen jersey, and I'm not going to get it done. Like, I have to be realistic. There's quite a bit of work left. I'm going to be away for nearly four weeks, and this isn't the sort of project that I would take with me. So, like I said, I've, I've finished the body up to here where you divide for the sleeves. I have cast on the sleeves um, two at a time, doing magic loop. I don't know if I'll be out. I'm only doing the band and then when I start the colour work I'll probably put one of those on hold and just do one at a time. I'm not going to get it done and I'm okay with that because like we have to knit what, what makes us happy right. This makes me happy but it also takes a lot of mental um, stamina. I have to concentrate, I have to read graphs um, and I will finish it. I'd like to finish it for our winter next year. But I'm not going to get it finished this year. So I've put it out there. I've confessed. <laughs> I failed my challenge. And um, yeah, it is what it is, right? The other project, and now I'm really that sad about this one because I look at this project and I thought, oh, this would be the perfect cardigan to be taken away with me to Europe. But I'm not going to get it finished either. So it's the Merit cardigan. That's it there, by Kristen Drysdale. And it's knitted from the top up in the rounds, and it's a steep project. I have only done one steep project, and I loved it. Turned out beautifully. I will show you that one day. I'll, um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to pull out some of my older knits and share them with you. I will show you what I've done. Once again, I'm I'm enjoying it. I love it. It's not it's not in the naughty corner for any other reason that I have been distracted, been distracted with other things. So it's really a bit naughty, but um, I haven't done anything since I would have showed you this last time. But there it is, knitted up. I'm so happy with the colours. I just love the way it's knitting up. There's my steaking bridge there. You see that that is where I will be taking to it with the scissors um, I'm using my Jameson and Smith full ply jumper weight they're the two colors I'm using and the main color is a neutral uh, and I'm knitting that straight from the cone and like I said there's no reason I haven't worked on this other than the fact that I get distracted really easy with other things and I'm a little bit sad because it would have been really a really nice um, cardigan to take away with me. But it's not going to happen. But I thought I, I should share these older whips with you because um, I've talked about them in earlier podcasts. And you probably, if you followed me, um, my journey right from the beginning, you'd probably be sitting there saying, well, what happened to this project? And what happened to that project? <laughs> They're all still here. <laughs> They're, um, they're just waiting for some more attention. The other whip. And the reason I share this with you too is once again, is their patterns that I'm knitting. Patterns that if I say I love them, I love them. Um, I love the way they're written. I love the way they're knitting up. And by going over them, I hope to inspire some someone else that, that may just be sitting there thinking, well, I... I need something new to cast on and yeah. So my Winter Beach Cardi by Andrea Maori. Love Andrea Maori's patterns. I actually really like her. I watch her podcasts. Um, I'll knit if I want to. She does one every week. She does about a 30 minute podcast. It's like a Q&A question and answers podcast. Um, but I am a fan of Andrea Rat Mary Knits. I find that a lot of them are just so wearable. They're, they're just wardrobe staples. They're, they're just perfect. Um, 
and once again I haven't done a lot since I saw you last I have finished the body I haven't finished the body but I've got to the point in the body there it is there that I've designed divided for the slate no I'm dividing so at the moment I'm doing one of the sides then you do the other side no then you do the back then you do the other side then you join it at the shoulders I'm doing this in a DK um I've got one here apple door DK the color I'm using is quench I've shown you this before it's really pearlescent it's beautiful so the color I'm using is quench once again I, I'm loving it I love it and it's um it hasn't been worked on only for the fact that I have been distracted but it will it'll get finished like the Merritt cardigan and my Marie Wallen um they're sitting there on my shelf in neatly in their bags um I have a couple of these bags from in stitches and that's what I have both those projects I've showed you are in one of these bags so they just sit nicely on my shelf um they're not in the naughty corner they're just temporarily on hold right I'm going to talk about gauge again and I hope I don't bore you with this topic because I haven't got my head around it myself but I have this beautiful pattern which I've shared with you Sprite by Andrea Mowry there. I have the yarn all wound up well one of each color cake dub ready to go it's in the yarn adelic I'll tell you the two colors I've used and I have swatched. Now this is amazing. And this is what I mean. Sorry. You should swatch. If for only one reason than to see the fabric that you are creating. Because that swatch will tell you. You know what I mean? Look at it and feel it. And, and you're going to know whether you love that fabric or not. Because that's the fabric that's going to be in the final garment. So my first swatch, I used a 3.75 mil or a 5 US, and that's my swatch. I put those eyelets in it so I know what size needle I did. Now, I did this swatch and I counted my stitches and I got 26 stitches per 4 inch. Um, and the pattern calls for 23. So I was out by three stitches, which is quite a lot. So I did a second swatch. Do, do, do. And on this, I only went up to a size four, which was only a quarter of an inch, 3.75 to a four, or in US. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, one needle size in a US. Now, look at the difference in the size of those two swatches. That is a really big difference for a quarter of a mil. I knitted them the same, no difference. I, I wet block them. Um, I treated them both exactly the same, and there's such a big difference. So if I knitted the garment in this, it's going to be smaller and so what this tells me is that if I want this fabric, I need to go up a couple of sizes. I will show you my maths, but I'm not confident in it. But so I did this one and, and I love this fabric, this fabric. It's not too, um, it's not too loose. It's, it's lovely. This one is lovely too, but it is tighter. So, when I counted this one, I got 22 stitches. The pattern calls for 23. So, I'm pretty close. So, I'm going to do this pattern in a 4 mil needle, a size 4 mil needle, and I'm going to go up one size bigger than what I would normal, normally do. So, I'll measure my bust circumference, I'll look at that size, and then I'm going to go one bigger. Like I said, there's no science. This is purely guest work, guesswork, what do I call it? a guesstimation. But I just wanted to show you that because those two swatches are very different. 
So don't be afraid to swatch. Don't think it's a waste of time or a waste of yarn. If you, if you need the yarn, I could unravel these and ball them up again and knit with them. So you're not wasting the yarn. If I get to the end and I'm playing yarn chicken, I will unravel these swatches. I just think it's a really important exercise because um, they're so different. And, and it's a quarter a quarter of mil size needle difference. So so with the maths, I'm not going to bore you with the maths, but I did that formula um, where you take the gauge as listed in the pattern and then you multiply that by the gauge that I got and that'll give you, it, it gave me 37.4. So, which I think is about a size medium. I'm going to go up a size. But, yeah, I just, I really wanted to share those two swatches with you. Um, and I really will try to get some information that's more precise. I did do that. Um, in my last podcast, I recommended a site. And I will put it again in my show notes. And it's an eight-page document. All, talking all about gauge and I really think it's worth reading it does have the maths there but I still couldn't really get my head around it but um yeah that's all I'm going to say about swatching it's so worth what it's so worthwhile doing um just to see the fabric that um that you end up with Did, um, the yarn I'm using for that, in case you're curious, is yarn Adalic. This is a five-ply sports weight. That's what's hanging behind me there. And the main colour I'm using is Ordinary Joe, um, which is a real sort of neutral colour. And the other one I'm using is called Wondrous Place. And that's this orangey colour. And I'm using that for as my contrast colour. So they're my two colours for that pattern. <laughs> so that will probably be my next cast on. I've talked about it now for a couple of episodes. I've chosen my yarn. I've done my swatches. And I'm pretty happy and relaxed about what size I'm going to do and that's my next cast on and I'm just going to grab a drink because I'm getting really dry in the throat okay I'm going to share with you um, a couple of new patterns that I have come across that are in my list that ever ever ne ever in never ending list of things that I want to cast on so just to follow up from my last episode um fairy bouquet this beautiful jersey. Um, what really appealed to me, of course, is the uh, lace work on the yoke. But there's this beautiful pattern that runs down the whole length of the sleeve. Now, that's done um, with a double-stranded mohair. And as I said, I've done a lot of double-stranded with mohair. But I've decided to go with a different yarn. And it's um, a cotton alpaca blend. And... I talked about it in my last episode, but what I wanted to tell you is I haven't swatched yet. <laughs> so that's where I was last episode, and that's where I still am. So the yarn I've chosen um, is a yarn that's available in all of our local yarn stores here, but it's called Cheska, and it's a DK 70% cotton, 30% alpaca. Feels super, super soft. But I think this year, I think I will get gauge and I think it's going to give me really beautiful stitch definition that, um, I mean, there's beautiful stitch definition there with the mohair, but I, 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 I'm really excited about this. I think it's just going to, I think that lace work is just really going to pop with this yarn, but I haven't swatched yet. So um, that's where I am. That's my update with that. But these two new patterns... So when I purchased the Cumulus Tea by Petite Knits, um, I saw that there's also a Cumulus Blouse. And this is a long sleeve version. 
Now, the, I look at this and I think it's really similar to what I'm wearing, but it's got this beautiful deep V-neck, which I'd really like, and I haven't got anything like that in my wardrobe. So that's the Cumulus Tea. She's used knitting for olive yarn, um, but, you know, I know that I can substitute the yarn out. Um, but I just think that'll be a really basic, like this one, like a sweatshirt, really nice go-to. But what I love about it is definitely that deep V-neck. So that's one of the new patterns that I've purchased. Now, the other one, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right. It's called Ilha, the Ilha sweater. And I'll show that you that there. Now it's worth going on Revelry and having a look at this because um, there's a lot of lace work in the yoke, but it also has um, a cable panel down the sides, if I've got that right. I'm sure I haven't got it confused. Um, the pattern, it's named after the art of basket weaving. The art of basket weaving art from the Portuguese village called Ilha. Um, it's top down in the rounds. It's raglan, which I like. Um, yeah, and there's a braid that, that goes down both sides. And the yarn that they've used, she, the, she describes it as light and drapey, um, which I really like. The gauge for this is 21 stitches, and I know that I can get that gauge out of this yarn, which is the yarn Adalic 5 ply at the back there. So um, there's also detail in the rib. It's not showing up, which sort of represents that basket weaving, which the, the, um, the, the project is actually themed about. I just really like it, and it's... Um, it's on my list as one that I want to do. And that's that. I'm pretty well done. I have got a wee, um, a wee little shop update. I did want to mention a couple of podcasts that I watch. Um, I do often get asked uh, what part, podcasts I watch. And I know that if you're watching me, then you're probably interested in our other knitting podcasts. So one I watch a lot is um, Ray and Kevin, and it's called Needles um, Needles at the Ready, and they are based in the US. The other one I have just started watching is um, called Wool and Wishes, and that's two, I'm sure if they're sisters or sister-in-laws, um, and they... Uh, are coming from England, from London, somewhere in London. So that's Wool and Wishes. And the other one is um, that I found recently is Mindful Making. And her name is Jane and she's from Australia. So, and that really appeals to me because we're neighbours. So hello to all my neighbours in Australia um, that have been watching me. I also want to have a shout out to everyone in Australia because once again, they've got terrible flooding. Uh, it's just relentless. It's like they just get over one flood and now they're dealing with another one. And you're in our thoughts. My heart goes out to it's just devastating. If you are involved, um, if you're in those areas that are that have been affected, um, I, I hope you're doing well. But yeah, hello to my Australian neighbours and Mindful Making is that podcast. I I didn't mention it at the beginning, but I leave show notes for everything I talk about. So all the patterns that I've mentioned, um, any websites, any yarns are all in my show notes. So if you're watching me on your computer or your laptop, it'll have a bit of an intro and then it'll have, I'm pretty sure it says see more, and there's an arrow. So press that arrow and all the show notes will drop down. Because I have been asked before, where are your show notes? You always talk about show notes. I don't know where to find them. Um, but they are, I think if you're watching me from a smaller device, it's not as easy to navigate. But I know on a laptop or a computer, um, there's a link that says show more. So all my show notes are there available. Um, podcasts that I watch. 
I wanted to do a wee shop update. So in my last podcast, I, I have told you when this yarn arrived. It's called Nurturing Fibres and it comes from South Africa. And this is the yarn that I'm using in my Stephen West um, Mystery Knit Along. It is, um, it's a sock yarn. Bear with me. It's 100% merino, so it's got no nylon in it, but you can knit socks with it. It's got it's a very high twist, which makes it quite durable. Being high twist gives it beautiful stitch definition as well. She calls it a super twist sock, but there's 320 metres to 100 grams. So I would class this as a heavy fingering weight, maybe even leaning towards a sports weight. So if you're looking for something a bit heavier than a fine fingering weight, this is um, a beautiful yarn. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have 11 of the colors. There's a big range and I hope to get more. But what I wanted to show you, I've got one, two, three, five of the colors and I've bought in their matching mohairs. Um, and as you know, I love the double strand. I've done um, quite a few garments where you double strand the two. So I just wanted to show you a couple. This is called Aged Aged Leather. And it's a beautiful, I don't know, you'd call it a light brown, but it is really beautiful. The um, This is 210 metres per 25 grams. And it's silk, it's kid silk mohair. It's, it's luxurious. It's really beautiful. Um, the other colour is called Monet, which is this beautiful blue. It's showing up beautiful. And it has the matching colour mohair. For all of those pink lovers, I've got Cherry Blossom. And I love this pink. I'm not a real pink person in saying that. I've just knitted um, the No Frill Sweater in Pink. But this is really pretty. And then back to the earthy tones, which I like. This is Driftwood. And the other one is Silver. And I have had a couple of customers buy these to do the Weekend V-neck by Petite Knits that I finished a few episodes ago. Um, so the reason I love this yarn is because there's a story behind it and I just wanted to share that quickly. So this lady, they bought um, a farm in South Africa that I think has olive trees, but she was just playing with a bit of um, sort of indie dye and just playing around with a bit. And then she started selling it to her friends and her knit group and it, it became, she thought, this is really good. I can, I can make a business out of dyeing yarn. Um, on the property that she bought, it has quite a few um, like little farmhouses on it. So she's employed ladies that would probably not have an opportunity um, to thrive in the area of South Africa where she lives. She's employed um, Indigenous people and they work for her. She's provided housing and fair wages. And these women can now send their kids to school to get good educations. Um, th there is a story behind it, and that, that means a lot to me. Everything she does is environmentally friendly. All the wastewater, she uses no strong chemicals. So all the wastewater from the yarning, yarn dyeing goes to water um, some of the orchards that she has on this property. Um, but like I said, she's employing quite a few ladies that skein all this wool up. Um, she does a lot of the dyeing, but she has employees now. So she's grown enough that she can actually um, em employ these people and support the village that she lives in. Um, you know, these ladies now are thriving and they're being able to send their kids to school to get an education and they're ladies that may not have um, had that opportunity. So, the, and, and that's what attracted me to this brand, Nurturing Fibres. And I do hope to get more of their colours. Um, yeah, so that's my wee little shop update. I told you about these and they've sold really well and I've only got three left but these are the little um, leather sh shawl cuffs 
for holding your shawl in place. I only have three left, but I have some more on the way. And I also just wanted to show you, I think in the last episode, I showed you my big project bag. And that's the one that has my Stephen Weston and Long in it. It holds so much. But I wanted to show you these. I think I might have showed you. But these on my website are what's called the bucket bag. And they're the two sizes. So there's a small and a large. Um, so you can see the size. I wanted to just do that so you could see the size difference. Now, I have three small projects that I showed you before. My bralette, my Oslo hat, and a pair of socks in one of these small ones. Um, so the big one would hold a big project. Um, so that's my shop update. Not, not too much, not too long, not too drawn out. Uh, I think I have... I've covered everything. Um just going back, back to my next order that's coming through with my leather shawl cuffs um i've always wanted to get myself one of those leather wrist rulers i don't know if you've seen them around but they're really more costume jewelry and it's like if i ever see somebody wearing one i think oh they're a knitter <laughs> they're a knitter um they're literally a rule a ruler uh, a leather um length that looks like a ruler that goes around twice and clips on the wrist so you know would i rely on it for exact measurements i wouldn't because i think over time that leather is going to soften and maybe stretch a little bit but uh, yeah i just thought i really wanted them in before christmas because i think they make awesome uh, christmas gifts but i'm really looking forward to getting one for myself like i said it's almost when i see it's almost like a secret code <laughs> if you're wearing one it's like oh yeah they're a knitter hello um yeah so um i'm looking forward to that order arriving um when i've got one more episode that i will film before i go away on my travels and when I'm away, um, my online store will continue to operate as normal. My daughter looks after it for me. Um, the next couple of Saturdays, I'm home and my shop um, will be open from 10 to 2. So if you live in Christchurch and you want to come and see my little shop, um, I'll be open from 10 to 2 on Saturday. Details are on my website, unwindandknit.com. And... Um, and you can always call me or text me for any shop details. So that's all on my shop. Please visit my website, unwindandknit.com, and pop over and join our community, um, our Facebook community group. It'll be great to see you over there. You can post your projects and, yeah, just share what you're doing. Um, I, I hope I haven't confused anyone with that little few minutes that I talked about gauge like I said I haven't quite got my head around it what I do know it for me the important thing is the fabric that it's creating you have to love the fabric and then try to put that into your sizing but um thank you for joining me today thank you for joining me on all my podcasts um yeah it means a lot um so if you haven't already su subscribed please subscribe feel free to leave comments i do um reply to all the comments and um yeah i just wish you all well stay happy stay healthy um stay safe and get lots and lots of knitting done and i will see you again in about two weeks so thank you bye